Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the EBE, the Easy Building Editor for Game Guru. In version 1.14 you'll find a Builder tab and inside there add new site and this is where we're going to get to create a new building structure thing. So there's our grid and the grid can be painted on and you can also undo, redo, undo. Also when you paint you can hold down shift to delete and it's as simple as that. You literally paint your way to making buildings and structures. But we don't want a concrete, we want a wooden floor. So on the right, there's a series of textures. We're going to make a little 3b2 footprint for our building. We also want some walls. So we click the wall shape and brick texture. And we can paint ourselves a wall. You know, if you make a mistake like that, you just control Z to undo it. Next thing is we want a door, and we want a window, and we want a roof. So let's get on and do that. So perhaps we'll start with the roof. So before we add the roof, I want to make this a little bit bigger. So we do page up, and then add some walls there and round here. And then above that, I think we'll have a nice wood effect ceiling. So that looks okay. Now we're going to add a roof. What are you going to do for that? is come out of the EB by pressing E, go into entities, there's some new uh, assets that we've created, doors, roofs and windows, select roof, here's a roof corner piece, and you notice it's on a grid system, and so what you want to do is make sure that your building is also on a grid system, so extract, make sure it plonks down there, and then what you can do is extract this, do page up twice, and it can move nicely onto there, hold down shift, so you can duplicate this process like that and then we need a straight piece similarly page up twice and then maybe we will uh, do the back one first and then the front one so now you've got a nice roof for your building if you want to actually be able to edit inside the building and that's the easy way to press tab it chops off the roof part so now we want a door because we can't get in our brilliant building so we're going to select from our assets, the door frame, telescopic door frame, and we're just going to place that freestyle about there. And another little tip I can show you if you actually hold on L, it actually links the door frame to the building. So now the building's the parent and the door frame's the child. So when you drag it around, you can drag around both things. For example, you know, you can do this, that sort of. But now there's a there's a problem because there's bricks in the way of our door frame. So all you gotta do is go into edit, go back to builder tab and select column. Now column draws things like that. But in order to delete just these bricks and leave that wall uh, floor alone, just select the right texture, the texture that you want to delete, and there you go. Delete it as simple as that. And uh, just to make sure that our door frame is lined up nicely between the, the hole that we've created and back in the EBE to actually fill in that bit at the top all you got to do is go to rows make sure that you rotate it to the right place you can use mouse wheel as well to actually move this grid up and it's just a case of filling it in like so make sure that you've not gone through which we did so we can actually move this door down or we can delete a row like that what we'll do we'll delete the row we go to edit and make sure that we're on the right one and then just right click not the right click sorry uh, shift and left click and then if you wanted to restore that all you got to do is use your columns again or you could just even quicker just use a wall piece so you could fill that in like uh, that like that and that I think I may have added a wall, which is another feature I want to show. Let's say you've added a wall like that, and you want to remove it. Just hold down shift and then left click. Notice it preserves the floor and it doesn't cut through that wall as well. So it's a pretty handy way of uh, managing your walls. So if you wanted to be very accurate with filling that in, what you can do, there's a smaller shape is the cube, which is here. So just use your mouse wheel to get onto that layer. Make sure you're on stone, just fill it in. Same with this side, filled in. So that's how you can actually use the different shapes to edit. 
But we're not quite finished yet because now we need an actual door, not just a door frame. So we click telescopic door. Again, hold down L to link it to the door frame. And then you can move the door like so. Making sure, of course, that you're aligned on all your axes. Obviously, we can uh, fine-tune these placements as we go. But I think that will do for now. So now we've got a door and we've got a roof. Windows are much the same. You can go to the windows and there's different kinds of window shapes. So again, you would place your window where you want. Maybe you want to put it just above the door, like this. And then you can actually go to edit. Zoom in a little bit. Use your uh, mouse wheel to get up to the layer you want to extract. And then it's just holding down shift, eating away at that brickwork. You can probably get a little bit closer as well. Um, we don't want them. And I think there's one above we don't want as well. And there we are. We've created a little hole for our window. So that is the outside. If we actually press tab so we can see inside, what we can do is add a nice light. Let's say we add a warm white light. So make it static because we're going to light up this process a little bit later. And then go to properties, set it to sort of a nice warm glow. Apply changes. And then we can just raise that a little bit or a lot. And then drag it into our building. Maybe, uh, how would it look? Always a good tip, if you've lost orientation, just press return, it'll drop it on the floor, and then it's a lot easier to know kind of where that light is going to be. But it's a static light, so you won't really see it until we've actually light mapped the scene, which is what we're going to do now. So we put a start marker down, press test gain, and then we light map our scene by pressing F3. As you can see, the door works automatically. It's already got behaviours for that. Now you notice that uh, the roof is conflicting because it's exactly on the same plane because we use the grid system, which is very accurate, with the roof that we've put down. Now you could actually make, uh, there's a couple of ways you can solve that. You can move the whole roof up a little bit or you can actually add another layer on top of this building. So for example, if you wanted to keep the roof where it was um, and just have sort of the roof a little bit lower down, then that's what you can do. So all you're going to do is go back to EBE. See this grid system that you've got? You can actually have it manually placed, say, there. And then go to Builder, Floors. Let's have a different floor uh, ceiling so you can see what I've done. If I use a metal one, I can literally just paint on that side, paint on this side, and then the next time you see this building, it actually has a metal ceiling. <laughs> Which brings me up to another thing as well. You've actually got different materials. It's not just the textures. If you actually click on, uh, go back down to the floor, here's a stone sort of a veranda. But let's say we could also have a metal square here and then some wood here. And if I give myself a weapon so we can actually test uh, materials and some blitz, my changes and run. You'll notice that in the texture selection there's a little letter next to it, whether it's M or W or S, but it actually denotes the material. So you can see we've got metal, wood, and stone. It also sounds the same with football footballs. As you can see, the footfalls change based on the material, so that actually works as well. And of course, I love the door. And you see inside now, there's no Z clash anymore because we've actually dropped the ceiling a few, um, few layers. But of course, you could always move the roof up as well. It's entailed to, and those are perfectly good door. Now if we light map our scene. I 
and if we drop our uh, ambient stone we can really see the effect of that light source increase that a bit so you can see it so now it's darker in this corner and it's lighter there but of course you really want some nice furniture in your building in order to create maximum effect so let's save what we've got so we don't lose it and now we're going to add some uh, furniture again it's always a clever idea to press tab so you can chop the roof off and then we can proceed to add some furniture so you go to the furniture tab here's remember you press L you can lock it on the building so the furniture will move when the building moves always a good idea <laughs> otherwise you'll move your building somewhere else and then suddenly find that uh, change that to static you'll suddenly find that all your furniture is now outside three kettles you can never have enough kettles we'll have a draw thing again always remember to put down uh, L so you can link it and then a restraint chair let's have that in a corner let's pop that down with L and again uh, before we actually proceed to um, run it again what you can also do if you click on save you can actually save this building out and so you'll be able to use this building in other levels so you can have a, quite a catalogue of your own building constructions if you want so we press the game for one last time and then light map it the scene because at the moment if we run into the building now it's actually going to be using uh, let's get uh, some ambience screen on here not actually using the light mapper so if you press F3 it's now going to take the static light and all the obstacles that get in its way and it's going to bake some nice shadows for us much better so now if we now play with our ambience and surface levels that's it that's a bit moodier now you've got a uh, light up there, obviously you put a little lamp or some sort of wall lighting. And now you've got shadows cast off absolutely everything. It looks alright. Then we go out into the world. It's all pretty dark. We can obviously increase that, but I think what we'll do, we'll have it as a dark scene. So we'll set the sky to night and we'll change our terrain to wasteland. Yes. You can see you got real time shadows mixing nicely with the pre baked stuff, which obviously speeds your game up. The more static lights and light mapping you can use for visual effect, the better. And you've also got control now over better control over light, uh, lens, uh, sorry, light rays. So we can knock that up to full. We can see the light rays like so, or you can actually control it and drop it right right down to nothing if you want to which again if you set it to zero it will give you some performance but we'll really we'll crank it out and have a really big one so those are your building I think we will actually add a bit more ambience here so you can see this texture and one last thing is if you look at the back of this this building look you can actually see a bit of the of the floor of the inside that's because you're actually looking at an internal wall it's a inside wall so one thing you can do is clad the outside of your building. So I'll just clad two sides for you. Um, if we go back to the EBE, it also allows me to demonstrate another technique. I'll just use for the moment this one. I'm going to pick wall and then paint and then page up so I can paint both layers. You notice it's the same wall, but it's actually being clad because I'm actually using sort of this tile as well rather than that tiles wall so actually they can sort of sit side by side and for these cornery pieces we've provided columns like that and you've also got rows if you want to do sort of ridges at the top which uh, can work on some textures really well but now because of externally clad it you'll actually see there is no more revealing of your interior floor construction it actually works really good and then you might want to throw in a little bit of grass just on the outside and it's always a good idea as well to throw in a couple of entities 
just to make up the um, let's say we use that one you know bob them about here and there and everywhere and the idea is you sort of you diffuse the um, that edge because no one really likes sharp edges in games it makes it look sort of less than realistic if I can find uh, some small bric-a-brac maybe that mattress will do obviously you, you actually choose um, make it a bit smaller and pop it in about there and it just hides the edge a little bit so now when we run we actually go around the other side and this is a very important lesson but you're wondering where's my cladding gone it's because you didn't like map because if you go to real time you'll actually see the cladding it's only on pre-bake which shows the last thing you light mapped so real time reveals what you've just added down but before we do that I just want to show you another really cool feature notice I've cladded it in that what if you don't want these textures you can actually customize the texture so go back into the EBE and just right click on this texture and now we've given you a lot of textures to start with inside texture source and you can have traditional brick let's we pick this one some textures have normal maps and specular maps, some don't. If they don't, the engine will automatically provide normal maps for you, but they'll just be generic flat ones. They won't actually respect the different patterns that go on. So that's, uh, I know for a fact that doesn't have a normal map. I think I can find one that does. If we again go down, have a look. Cobbles, you can actually line your building with cobbles. Some textures are good at walls, some are good at floors, some are good at both. I think I've got an alien skin, here it is, alien skin one. And um, you can customize this texture plate any way you want. And it remembers your texture plate for each EBU you create. So you can, uh, you can use different set of 16 textures for every building you want to make. So press E. And this really will be the last test game. And then we're going to light map it and then we're going to run around a brand new creation. So here we are. What have we got? For our souls. We've got a working door, we got lovely light mapping, we got lens flow, you may have seen that lens flow coming through there. You got FXAA so you can look at uh, there's no more jaggies, you know that diagonal line at the bottom of the door frame. It's not jaggy anymore, it's nice and smooth, thanks to FXAA, which is also part of version 1.14. And if we come around here, you'll actually see obviously maybe we can tone down the uh, I mean it's a touch, maybe that. Just see it. Got a really nice, uh, juicy normal map and specular on the alien skin. And like I said, you can find your own textures and put them in. A great texture resource is textures.com. Used to be called gctextures.com. I highly recommend it. There's a lot of seamless textures which you're going to need. Seamless textures is the way to go. And as you can see, by putting a lot of bric-a-brac in front of these, you see that on its own. That looked pretty awful and it makes your game uh, look a bit sort of just slapped together but you can sort of break it up, break that line up with lots of other things make it more really world sort of look then you end up making a much better visual for your game and again that wall is to show an external wall as opposed to I can find one, no, I can't find one an internal wall which actually shows this construction so that is the easy building editor at night <laughs> Uh, I hope it was informative. Um, there will be more tutorials that go a deep dive into specific features. But for now, this is the Easy Building Editor first version. And I hope you found this video tutorial instructive. So until the next one, I shall say goodbye.